Okay, so when you're desprueing, the fastest thing to do is take your bolt cutters and clip the sprues. What you don't want to do is try and get too close to your actual details when you've got this much complexity because you're going to need to cut each sprue off and then bend it with pliers so you have access to where you need to saw so you can get into that point and saw and you can get into this point and saw. So you just go through and clip everything that you can and then bend the sprue out of the way so you can continue accessing your part and then we'll come back and time lapse all these sprues off with the jeweler saw. This is the final part when it's cast. A couple of design choices were left for aesthetic reasons. We're going to discuss some of the troubleshooting for advanced casting options. But that's what it looks like from one side. Here's what it looks like from the other side. And then by just twisting, it comes off. So the lower jaw hinges. And the final finish was actually just hand sanding. And that's to conserve this oxide layer that's the low relief right so all those carved out grooves from the cast wax that give the texture were protected by just taking a piece of sandpaper across the surface but we've got some fluid dynamic issues to discuss so when we look at the back of this there were several sprue points there was one at the jawline on either side the base of the horns the central interior of the skull the top of the horns, and then at the nostrils. And what's interesting here, let's see if we can get this in focus, so you can see that the top between the horn by the eyes and the horn by the nostrils actually did not fill with silver. So this has a bronze hue to it. This is the original base metal, and you can see sections that did not cast around that bronze area. Now aesthetically, I think this looks really cool, so I'm quite happy with it. However, if you want a uniform cladding, this actually implies you need more sprues than the nine sprues that were used to sprue this assembly, which looked like overkill in the initial. But you can see that even in this area, we could have either added more material or had a secondary set of sprues going between the brow ridge and the nostrils, probably touching down right by the horn. Now, although this area is harder to clean up, if you want your metal fully clad, it's better to err on the side of too much sprueing, in this case, than too little. And so what's happening is the average thickness of the part, which can be measured right here, needs to be uniform across the material and have enough push. So when you flip the jaw over, there's actually something different happening, where you can see metal flowing from the central sprue located here, and metal flowing through the skull and jaw sprue located here. Met at a different rate where the two didn't uniformly bond together there's actually a section where each side cooled and ran into itself it's not clear whether the jaw filled first 
or the interior of the skull, but it is clear based on this line that they had different cooling rates and retracted from one another. So again, more sprues would have been helpful and we could have thickened up the top of the jawline. Like right between these two horns, there could have been more wax and that would have resolved it. If you want to know what the average castable thickness of silver is in general, there's a good video on Luna Moths that I will link to this when we are doing organic burnouts. Uh, and basically you just measure what average thickness you can cast. So let's take a look at the garnets. So you can see there's some fracturing here in these garnets, which we knew was possible from the previous example, right? This is all the same batch. And then there's a secondary fracture in the main part of the eye. And once again, the eyelid here is actually too thin and the garnet is showing through. But again, because this was designed to be a very rustic piece, we're sort of embracing the concept of a very, very metal dragon in that respect. I like this battle damaged look and it goes with the aesthetic I was going for, which is why when the, the horns were being bent, coarse pliers were being used, the oxides here in the groove have been preserved and actually there's no brightening of these final horns in uh, the dragon, right? So during casting, all of this bronze oxidized to a blackish color and the only thing that was cleaned up to bright is just this bronze skull that's being shown through the cast silver. So there you have it. The clad cast silver and bronze dragon with garnet eyes.